Hey, welcome back. Um, here we're going to talk about um, graduated neutral density filters of the square and rectangular variety. And uh, I got this can show that we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the pictures and what filters I chose, the effect that they gave me, and why. So if you guys are ready, you just would jump right in, okay? Ready. And uh, jump in with any questions why we're going uh, because number one it lets me know that i'm still live and not talking to nobody <laughs> uh, and that has happened hasn't it yes but now you have an upgraded internet connection it is true i do i do before we get into this mark i got a real quick question What's the major difference or disadvantage or advantage between the square filters and the round lens filters? Oh, well, that's that's real easy. Um, the square filters you can get in graduated uh, neutral density, meaning that as you move the filter up or down in, in the filter holder, you change the effect on the picture. You understand, I have a, I have a round, uh... wait a minute, say that again? You can move the filters up and down in the filter yeah. holder, allowing you to change the effect on your scene. All right. Okay. There are a greater number of graduated designs that you can get in the square set. Now, B plus W and a couple other brands, they do make graduated NDs in the screw on type, but it puts the yeah. graduated uh, portion dead center in it and you get no adjustment. I have a uh, the round neutral density. Yeah. And um, I've learned where it is when the uh, filtered part is on the top of the lens, so to speak. So it's on the yeah. top of the photograph. I've learned where I marked it so I know where it's at. Other than that, I don't see any problem other than the fact that I can't adjust the horizon line, so to speak. Well, that and you can't get different grades, different densities, like a four stop, a three stop, a two stop. I, I believe it's a two stop is what I have. And you can't choose a variety of hard edge, or soft edge, or reverse. See, all of these things come in the square rectangular sets, and the only thing that you can get is, is what you got. Well, it's cheaper that way, then. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. You guys know what uh, Adelaire stands for? Studio. Dang it. All right. Uh, this is just, we're going to go through this real quick. Um, this is just uh, examples at the beginning um, of this presentation that I do on workshops. Um, you guys obviously understand that a long exposure is uh, your averaging movement in the scene over time. Okay, and this is the example that I give. This is my grandson, who's eight now, who develops his own black and white film. And he and I were at the beach last summer, and I had a, um, this is the Leica monochrome. And I got tired of taking pictures of him playing in the water. So I slipped on a 10 stop solid ND and then took another picture immediately. So here's before, there's after. Oh, wow, he's swimming. <laughs> now he's gone. Well, he's kind of a black spot in the water now. He's underwater. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the only difference is that 10 stop ND, and this was about a 60 second exposure. You can see that the waves aren't too fierce, so 60 seconds was enough. Now, in the middle of the day, these filters work great for this. Okay, when you get the same basic uh, uh, subject brightness in the sky as you do down here in the foreground. You don't need graduated ND filters, which typically is, is after the sun is up high, okay? When it's up high and you're doing this kind of work, you don't need this kind of filter. And that's just as true for cityscapes. When you're shooting up the sides of um, 
the big buildings and you're getting the sky and the clouds tearing by above and between the buildings. A singular screw on solid ND will work just fine for that. Pretty cool, huh? Yes. Yep. All right. Um, but for everything else, um, that the, the rules change. Um, this is just discussing the needs in terms of what you should have for camera and camera equipment, tripod, and then a basic set of screw on ND filters to do the kind of work that I just showed you with Jordan, okay? A three, six, and a 10 stop. And actually, I would add one more to this. I would add a 15 stop. Uh, you can buy uh, a 15 stop uh, from Singray now, a, sc a screw on solid ND, okay? You got a 16 also, I think. Yeah, uh, it, it's either a 15 or a 16. I, I can't remember which one it is right now. I believe it's 16, Mark. I think I have one. Okay. Yeah, I've got one somewhere. I think it's in the, one of my medium format camera kits. Um, but, again, in the middle of the day, you don't need to graduate. Okay, unless something really wild is happening. So having a, a set of screw-on solids is a good thing. Um, by the way, if you go to my blog, these are all downloadable. This 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 presentation is there. Okay, I mean it's got some good stuff in it. How many are you confused by the nomenclature on these filters and what it means? Um, how to read it? Here's a little here's a little chart that tells you what all of the numbers stand for. When you buy a B plus W, they list all four nomenclatures on it. 110 in B plus W language stands for 10 stop. Um, in D 3.0, point three equals one stop. So a 3.0 is 10 stops. Um, German, um, they do a 10 BL for 10 stops. Okay, BL is their sh sh shorthand for stop. And then there's another way it, with the uh, the filter factors. The thousand X is ten stops. Okay. So, a, a handy little chart that can help you go through it. Always set your camera to the lowest ISO value. We're going to blow by this because you guys all know this. Okay. There is a great little. Let me turn off my phone here. There is a great little. Um, iPhone application called Lee Stopper, uh, where you can dial in um, your, your pre-measurement shutter speed, and then depending on what, and you can move these wheels, and depending on what filter that you put on it, it just directly reads out the upgraded of uh, the updated uh, shutter speed, okay? And it does 10. Uh, let's see here. 6, 10, and 15. 15. All right. So it's a great little application. Then it has a timer. You can start it, and it'll, it'll, it'll time the exposure for you and then set off an alarm when it's time to close the lens. Okay, it's, it's a cute little thing. <clears throat> okay, now on to what you all... You guys wanted to talk about um, the the various graduated ND filters in rectangular or square format. Now, I use the Lee system. Um, I know a lot of people that use the high tech system and the Singray system. Um, I actually prefer the Singrays to everybody's, but they, they're about ten times overpriced for what you get. So I don't buy many of them, but they are great filters. Uh, but they come in graduated hard edge. Um, and a hard edge filter is where, like, if you were going to be shooting uh, at a sunrise or a sunset, where there was a hard horizon line. Uh, a hard edge works very good. And they have the soft edge, which is what I use most of the time. As you can see, it's a softer graduated up to dark from light. The hard edge is, is, is much faster, see? 
Okay, and you can get them in two stops, three stops, four stops are the basic ones that you can get. All right, and then there's something called a reverse graduated ND filter. And what this is, is let's just take this hard edge here and see how it starts out. Well, here, let's do the soft edge. See how it starts out very, very light here in the center? Mm -hmm. And it goes dark as it gets to the edge. Um, it basically reverses that. It starts dark in the center and then quickly goes out to lighter as it goes up. Um, and that's for taking pictures of of sunrises or sunsets or something with a lot of light on the horizon. Um, as you know, when the sun is rising or setting, as soon as it touches the horizon or it's just below the horizon, you get ultra bright light in the sky above and then everything below it is dark. So this gives us a lot of darkening right at the horizon then it goes up quickly to lighter, okay? Okay, um, let's just go through these real quick. Um, here's a picture at Lake Manamesquite up in North Carolina in the Eastern Shores. Um, this was a sunset, and it was a, a fire of a sky sunset, all right? And as you can see, the sun's down here, but there's a cloud base at the horizon that's keeping control of the light. So I didn't need a reverse, uh, uh, you know, the reverse grad. I just did two stop soft graduated in D. And I brought the soft edge right down here to the trees. Um, and the reason is, is the foreground was underexposed by a, around two solid stops. So putting the soft edge graduated in D to stop in this picture and enabled me to equalize the sky and the water in the foreground and make for a much more pleasing image. Okay, I find that I use these soft grad in D's more than anything else. Okay, <clears throat> this was taken here on Pauly's Island. This is another one of those weird sunsets uh, looks like a nuclear weapon's been set off in the distance. Mm -hmm. um, but I was getting horrid silhouettes down here. You can see how dark this is, right? Yeah. And the sky was blowing out, and this water here, the reflection was blowing out. So how I overcame that is I put a, a stronger soft ND on there. Again, a three-stop soft grad. Putting... Um, uh, the lightest part right down here in this in this uh, sea oats, in the, the grass, and then letting it get darker as it goes up. And that gave me enough information in this lower area of the picture that I was able to pull it out in post-processing and get structure in this little tea dock and in some of the grasses and still have a wild reflection here in the surface of the water. And I think it's, it's nicely balanced for what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a three-stop graduated soft ND. Okay. Um, this one was a wild, bright sunset oh. at the horizon, and it was a horrid wind, and the clouds are just tearing by, okay? I wanted to do something. I wanted the water to be soft. I wanted the clouds to tear. But yet I needed detail here. All right. So this is the first example of using that reverse soft graduated ND. A two stain. Use duct tape on the wall. It's dark right here on the or it's light, super light right here in the horizon. Okay. And then it gets, so it was just blowing the picture out. So I put that dark edge of the reverse grad here to darken this, and then it gets lighter as it goes up. And this, this turned out to be a, a wild, long exposure. And it, it turned out quite nice with just this reverse soft grad ND. Now, Mark, can I ask a question? Absolutely. So on this particular shot the the horizon line starting from the houses up on the right that kind of drops off to the left would you tilt it just a little bit to match that 
I did indeed tilt it slightly. Uh, I, what I did is I started it here and I came down in a slight angle and it was touching the, the ocean surface right here. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. And how did you decide on two stop rather than three stop? Oh, because two stop was the only one I had. <laughs> okay. I now have a four stop too. Okay, but if I find a two stop isn't enough, then I'll double up. I'll put a two stop reverse grad on the horizon, and then I'll put a, another two stop soft grad up here. So remember, you can double up or triple up on your filters depending on which filter foundation kit you buy. Mm -hmm. All right. Now with the reverse, theoretically, you could put you could put them you could double up in opposite directions. Yes, you could. But in most situations where you need a reversed graduated ND. Uh huh. It's already very, very dark down here in the foreground. Okay. Okay. Now, as your sun is setting and you're losing light, are you switching around your indie grads? It happens generally way too fast for that. Um, what you're doing is you're, 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 you're chasing it with the exposure values. As, as if it's sunset and it's getting darker, um, then you can lower your aperture. Uh, start out somewhere around F16 and go down to about F8. Once you reach F8, stop and start increasing your ISO a bit. Because remember, we're, we're shooting at the, at the base ISO value that the camera will give. So you can start increasing the ISO to, to overcome that. Now, once the sun has set, you no longer need this filter. Okay, once it's below that horizon. Uh, it goes below the horizon that a soft, ed, a soft edge um, ND is going to be enough here. Okay. Can anybody make a guess what I'm using here? Well, you got a water is soft, so you probably went with a the full on ND plus hard to say. Okay, two stop reverse soft grad and a ten stop solid ND. Okay, so did you have to pull up the houses on the right? No. This was super, super bright. Everything was getting blown out. The sun, <clears throat> by the way, this is the same seam as here. Okay, I, it's, it's just 10 minutes later. I walked up the beach, got closer to, to, to these uh, groins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the sun is below the horizon, but you can see on that cloud base there, it's still super bright, but now it's reflecting down in the foreground, and the foreground is just as bright as the sky now. Mm -hmm. So the object was to darken this in here, okay? But it was still too bright to get the long exposure that I wanted, so I added that 10 stop solid ND on top of it. Now, I assume, Mark, you're pretty much, when you pick up, when you look at a scene and you pick your filter out of your bag, you've, you're you doing this on experience and eyeballing the difference between the the sky and the water or the, the – Yeah, the, yeah. Just above the horizon in the water. You're not getting out your meter and looking at the difference between the no, two. This happens way too fast to be able to meter it. Right. Okay. okay. So what you do is you, look, you always look at the sky. You look at the horizon, and then you look at the foreground. And if you, do the, you do enough of this, and you're going to be able to say, oh, my goodness, this is two stops darker than this. Mm -hmm. and, and this is four stops brighter 
than this. And so you know that you're going to have to put some sort of a, of a soft graduated ND up here. And the whole scene is so bright, you know you're going to have to have a, a decent um, solid ND to overcome the entire picture just to slow the exposure down. Right. The two-stop reverse grad was just to, to tame this bright line of, of, of light here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it slowly lightens up as it goes up. All right. So it was enough to bring the entire sky in, into order and then to slow down the exposure so I could soften these uh, these waves. I yeah. added I added the 10 stop ND. Gotcha. Okay. All right. This is a four stop soft graduated ND on the top going down to right about here. Okay. Okay. And then a two stop reverse graduated on the horizon. This is sunrise. Okay. And then the tree was, I knew it was going to be in silhouette. So I had a high power flashlight and I light painted the tree. Wow. Okay. Just, I, I didn't need to see all of the detail, but I needed to see a little bit of detail. Okay. I also light painted the stump being very careful not to let the light hit the water because that would mess everything up. So this is with two filters and a flashlight. How far, Mark, how far away were you from the actual subject to the do that? The tree is 30 feet away. So your flashlight obviously has a narrow beam on it. Yes. Um, I, I, I can tell you about the flashlight later. I can, I'll can. i take a picture of it and put it on, uh, on the Hangout. Okay, no worries. It, it's focusable. Cool. And then another good light for that are the um, uh, the gunfighting lights. Uh, yeah. People that have concealed carry permits usually carry a light for nighttime. All right. And uh, a lot of those gun lights are extremely focusable. They're white. They, they are white. They're, they're not bluish. They're white. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's what I did here. Okay. Um, if you're shooting in the blue hour, you you will probably not need an ND. Okay. You know, that's that hour before sunrise and the hour after sunset. Um, but you need to remember that this stuff changes fast. And as it as the sun approaches going below the horizon or coming above the horizon. You generally will not have enough time to get your exposure dead on because it changes so fast. You, it's hard to keep up with. And the only thing that's going to help you is experience. All right. So that means, yes, there's going to be a little bit of guesswork when, it, when the sun is, is reaching that critical point. All right. Yep. But if, if you're looking to shoot right as the sun is at that horizon, you know you know you have to have that reverse grad. It's the only way you can fix it. All right? Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know all this stuff, remote shutter release. Don't stand on a small bridge. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, take a, a folding chair with you. The, the, uh, b &H and Amazon sells a real inexpensive photography stool that's made for taking out in the field. It folds up and it has a strap to go over your shoulder. Um, have a dim red flashlight. Um, don't use a white light because anybody that's there shooting with you is liable to pull out a gun and shoot you. Spare batteries and lens cleaner. What happens when you're at the beach? Salt spray. You betcha. Know that recently. Okay. So recommendations on lens cleaners. Lens plan. 
Uh, a lens pin gets ruined by the salt spray. Uh, um, nobody knew one then. <laughs> yeah. Um, Zeiss sells. Go to go to Amazon and look up lens cleaning. A Zeiss sells in a clear bottle a wonderful spray in um, uh, anti lit regs. You spray the spray on uh, your filters. Wipe it down with your fingers. Respray it again, and then uh, wipe it off with with your cloth. They work good. They're fast. They scoff at salt spray. Okay, and they come in in little one ounce bottles and big ten ounce bottles. Okay, make huh. sure your, make sure your camera's long exposure noise reduction is always turned on you will get better images out of your camera if you do this. Mm. There are those that go, mm. No, it's because I haven't done it, and I'm thinking, well, maybe that could be an issue. Uh, what this does is if you take a one-minute exposure, the camera shuts the shutter and then takes another one-minute exposure with the shutter closed. It's called a dark frame exposure. And then it compares the two pictures internally, and anywhere there's a hot a hot pixel, it, it smooths it out, and the results will amaze you at the difference. It works. Approximately how much time involved in the exposure before you turn on the long exposure noise reduction? Uh, I, 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 it, most cameras you can put it on automatic. No, I'm thinking what would be. Oh, yeah, I understand that part, but you know, if I'm just doing a three second or five second, is it worth doing it then, or is it more like past thirty seconds and beyond? Or if you're going to be doing uh, um, Milky Way shots, which are typically fifteen seconds, you need yeah. it. Okay, okay, it's nice to know. Okay. Uh, let's see, da, da 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 da. Moving water, clouds, waterfalls. Okay. Let's play a guessing game. Pretty picture. Thank you. How long was the exposure? It was short. You can see the ripples in the water. I'd say 30 seconds. Less than that. Order. Three seconds. Yeah. Well, that's a... Uh, let's blow past... 30 seconds. Okay. Let's, let's go right here. All right, let's let's start here. Three seconds. Hey, this is out your way, Carl. Yeah, sea mounts. Yeah, uh, sandstone cliffs. You betcha. That's your San Francisco area there. It. This is more down uh, by Monterey. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I guess Monterey is a bedroom community of San Francisco. That's a 10 sec, almost, that's almost 10 seconds. Not quite, it looks like, because of the way the water's sprayed. Six. Very good. Six seconds. Okay. Notice I'm getting a little tearing in, in the clouds. All right. But I wanted a little motion of the water coming up the beach. Okay. So I went for a shorter one. Now, typically we don't have a lot of waves down here under the Bay or under the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, uh, but the water does move fast. Um, but we get this fog moving at night. This was at two a.m. And you don't have hot spots on the lights. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it has to be less than uh, Milky Way shot. Twenty-four seconds. Okay, right in there. Okay, these lights were not very bright, and remember, it's foggy out. Okay, I actually this is one of my favorite shots. I had to work for this one. It's a difficult exposure. Yeah. Has anyone bought it? No, no, no. They won't either because I don't live in California. They don't buy San Francisco shots here. The heavens no. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Got to have LA shots. Okay. This is right at sunrise. See the sun right here? All right. 
Okay. Okay. This is in the Outer Banks. Yes. If I go back to the Outer Banks, you guys, if you want to do long exposures, you should come to this one. This is about nothing but long exposures. Day, night, day, night. It just goes on forever. <laughs> 45 seconds. Not terribly long, huh? Mm -mm. Hey, this is the Ravenel Bridge in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, these funky ass colors, ask me about these. Where are these coming from? The filter? No. The lights of the bridge? The, the long exposure. The lights of the bridge and the lights of the city are going up and bouncing off the low clouds. And this is what we're seeing. Okay. 60 seconds. That's a famous bridge to photograph, isn't it? Yeah, but boy, you got to wear a head to foot bug suit. <laughs> we don't have that problem in LA. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just have gang wars. Well, those are our bugs. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, we talked about this one. How long do you think this one is? That's a long exposure. That is uh, almost a minute. Could be longer. Yeah. 200 seconds. Two minutes. You know, I want to comment on this one compared to the other one where, Carl, you mentioned that it was shorter than my guess because you could see the ripples in the water. You can still see ripples in this one as well. And it happens, in my experience, because if the ripples are exactly the same over the duration of the exposure, you still see the ripples. Yes. Oh, I see what you're Sometimes talking about. It's hard to tell exactly how long it is just based on whether there are any definitions at all in the water. But notice the flatness of the water. See, that makes the longer the exposure, the flatter that water gets. Yeah. Okay. Well, this was a really rough beach. The, right here is the, the water land interface. Okay. Okay. So what's what's going on here is I'm getting more motion here. So this was almost four minutes. This is three plus minutes here. Now, how long did you spend with the flashlight on? Oh, 30 seconds. Okay. And was that, you're just doing that by feel? Yeah, I'm, I'm watching the light play against the tree. Mm -hmm. And then did you review the image and then uh, adjust how long you expose the tree? No, this was, this was a one-shot wonder. This was, you don't have time for two. 200-second exposure, 200-second dark frame exposure. And by the time that was gone, the light was gone. So when using the light, the flashlight, are you walking back and forth to eliminate the shadows that the light itself might make from the branches so you get different yeah. angles on the light? Yeah, I'll, I'll take two steps to the right and two steps to the left and paint. Okay. But only for about 30 seconds. I only wanted a slight amount of detail here. See, just a slight amount. Mm -hmm. Okay. Industrial. Who would have thought to do industrial scenes for long exposures? Master Mark. I don't know. I was bored. <laughs> I was down in Georgetown. And I saw this scene and I thought, oh, God, I bet if I use a real tiny aperture, I could get great stars out of those lights. And it did. Yep. Okay. Um, this is a paper plant. Uh, they make cardboard paper here. Okay. 240 seconds. Does it stink to high heaven there? It, it can. Yeah. It can. There's a still mill here, and there's this paper mill here. And I, I, the paper mill smells the worst. And it's, it's about 15 miles from where I live, and in some mornings I can smell it here if we have temperature inversion. Yeah. Yeah, you guys got paper plants. We got oil refineries. The sulfur is yeah. horrible. You know what we say? That's the smell of money. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um, you, you notice that we, we, we've got a trend happening here. We're going up in shutter speed, aren't we? Yeah, this is a good four minute exposure, I would guess. Five. Yep, five minutes. This was, believe it or not, this was the, um, what camera did I use for this? I think this was the Sony. It's got a real nice drop right there. This is a rule that I broke one of my own rules. Um, Richard, what rule am I talking about? Richard's not here anymore. No, I am here. You're kind of two peers the, at once. The, the pole, the front piling is kind of bumping into the bridge, but that's not your rule. You, oh, you want to get up closer to the water. Okay. No sand in the picture. No mm. sand in the picture. So you haven't taken a workshop per se. Um, if you're going to do a long exposure to, to smooth out water, then it, by God, it better be water. The sand is distracting. But there was no way I could get out there because it was a low, low tide. I didn't pay attention to my calendar and I screwed myself. Um, but I like the composition of having this groin here. All right. And I couldn't get any higher. So this, there was space here. So, I mean, th this is a compromised picture, but I still like it. You ever think about cloning it down? No. <laughs> 400 seconds. Uh, I can tell you that this was with the uh, Fuji X, uh, XE2. Wow. Oh, the Fujis, they were good for everything. Same scene, same location, different tide. Okay? Yep. Af after sunrise, 800 seconds, XT2 again, or XE2. Next time look. That's a long exposure there now. Yeah, I'm doing the math in my head. Why so long, Mark? <laughs> Was that twelve minutes or something? Yeah, it, the the waves were so fierce. Okay, and a lot of times, people will go out and do long exposures. They'll do them so long that it's hard to differentiate the horizon. Water and the sky will blend together. The sky will be bright white. And the the water will be only slightly darker. And they're, they're ultra modern. They're really better done in black and white, and they sell like crazy. Is your tripod planted in the sand? Oh, yeah. Or in the water? Somebody, in the sand. A little off topic, but somebody that comes into a gallery and sees this, do they even understand that it's a photograph that is a long exposure and not something that's been manipulated? If, if I'm there, I, I teach them about it. But generally, people will like it for what it looks like to them at that moment. And they don't care how it's made. Okay. And those that do know how it's made, they're looking specifically for them. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Resources, uh, bulb countdown timers. You've got all of that. Um, Kevin Adams. This website here, he sells a nifty, neat little tool that you put a hand warmer packet into. Yep. And you wrap it around the end of your lens. And it keeps water from condensating on your lens for long exposures when it's really cold. Mm. Yeah. And he's the one that sells these wonderful flashlights. Okay, um, and he even has gel holders to put over your flashlights to change the color. 
Okay. Um, this is the download right here on my on my blog. If you go to my blog and go on the front page, go all the way down to the bottom of the right hand menu. And if you click here, um, it'll bring up a list of all of the um, um, the downloads that I currently have there. All right, and that was my ending slide. <laughs> the uh, that website for that guy that was Kay Adams. Yes. Have you heard his story? No. You know why he does this kind of art? No. He came home one day and found his wife gone, all of the furniture gone, and all that was left was the dog and the carpet. Welcome to divorce. And white walls. So he got out a black magic marker and started painting all over his walls like this. And then got his dog to look up and take and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's got some wonderful pictures. Amazing artist. My first wife, I, I came home from work early that day, and, and she was in the middle of cleaning out the house. <laughs> it was a moment. Uh, it happens. Yeah. Okay. So, Any questions? I know you're in a hurry, Richard. This is very good. I really appreciate it. It's very helpful. All right. Like I said, you can download this. It's it's on my blog. Okay. Um, the thing about it is, it's people buy these filter sets, and it's hard to understand when and where and why to choose a filter. If you go to workshops, if you go photograph with people that do this kind of work, you know, like your club, you you you, you will pick it up, but a lot of times it's, it's good to be able to sit down and see how other people have done it and then hear how and what filters they use and why they chose them. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting just experimenting. Uh, I guess that was last night. Yeah. Last night? Yeah, I, I went out to White Rock Lake, which is just a little and then uploaded some of those pictures okay. when I was just playing around. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, you go out and you, and you do this a dozen times, you're going to be an expert on these filters. Okay. Um, and yes, the sand screw works great. Um, I sent you the link to the screw I bought. Yep. It even comes with a little, the, the tube that it, it comes in is the driver for turning it into the ground. It's a handle, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I went out and got uh, truck tie-down straps. But I looked for a set that the ratchet side was short. So there was just a hook and then the ratchet. Mm -hmm. So you could... Because usually the ratchet side's long enough that it would go all the way from the, from the screw up to the, the tripod. So you need a short ratchet. Okay, and I, I found both on Amazon. Um, I think the, the, the tie down was $17 and the ratchet set was $24. And you get four ratchets, you nearly need one. Okay. So you guys could go in as a group and, and you know, and, Everybody can have their own ratchet. <laughs> I've got to. I've got to have more sand beaches around here. Yeah. And up in Maine, most of the beaches are rock. Yeah. True. Sure. I have a sub. I have a question off subject, if you don't mind. All right. Well, let me stop the broadcast here real quick. <laughs>